Hi, this is Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm in studio with Murray Enos today. Hi, Murray. How Hi, are you? I'm very well, thanks. Um, so we're talking about the new movie that you star in, which is called Never Here. Right. Um, now, I heard that you were one of the first people to read the script. Yes, the first draft of the script was like seven years ago. Um, Camille and I were friends from New York, and I had done a short film with her, and I was giantly pregnant with my daughter mm -hmm. and she said Camille said I have this script I'm wondering if you would just take a look at it and uh, give me notes mm -hmm. at that point there was no conversation about me making this film with her so I did I read it we sat down we had a cute lunch where I gave her all of these notes and um, and that was the start of this very long process of editing the script and you know trying to get it made there was another version that was going to be made with a completely different cast and anyway oh. Long, long road. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up making it together just uh, th about three years ago now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Camille said that it was a, it was a a tough road because mm -hmm. you know the movie. I mean, you have to see the movie to really understand yeah. that it doesn't fall into genres or no. conventions at all. No, it doesn't. And I I think that was one of the most difficult strategies to finding how to get it to audiences is is how to market it and, and what audiences we should be seeking after. Mm -hmm. And there was a very clever group of people who said, you know, we should market this like a foreign film. And then mm. suddenly doors started opening. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about, um, about your character, Miranda. Um, Miranda is a performance and installation artist. Mm -hmm. Camille, interestingly enough, comes from performance art background. Mm -hmm. She studied performance art in London, and she's a very interesting person. So um, a lot of the performance art that I do in the film is actually pieces that she created for herself. No, and God. then, That's like, I, yeah, <laughs> redid them. Um, yeah. So anyway, she's uh, an artist who had a crisis at a young age. Both her parents were killed at, when she was at a young age. And out of that crisis, she developed this kind of um, reckless kind of way of living mm -hmm. uh, as pertained to her art, which was when an opportunity presents itself, if you pick up the string of that opportunity, you are required to follow it to the end of its road, no mm -hmm. matter where it leads you. And so in this film, what happens is that she is with her lover who witnesses a crime outside of her apartment window. Because he can't be there in her apartment, mm -hmm. she says, describe the, the crime to me and then I'll call it in uh, as if I witnessed it, but of course she didn't. And so then that's the string mm -hmm. that she picks up and she is led down this this road which you know is increasingly twisty and turny and uh, turns into a thriller, like there's a lot of elements of kind of classic thriller, but then also there's questions of how much um, is actually happening and how much is in her, in her mind. Yeah, it the P, um, the film reminds me a lot of kind of a choose your own adventure, <laughs> but instead of choosing your logical move, you're right, choosing right. the like I want to see what happens yeah, if I you know yeah. decide to face the dragon. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. I know. I would. Sometimes reading the script, I would be screaming at her out loud. <laughs> right. Don't do it, you know. But she's in, she's incapable of of self protection. Yeah, and I like. I mean, I love that. I love uh, like a character that uh, you know. You, you're the motivations are not hero motivations, mm -hmm. even though it's you know. I mean, that's what makes for dramatic tension is like, yeah. what if you step down the road that you're not supposed so to, step to step down? down. And it's yeah. not like a horror movie where you're like, get out of the house, what are you doing, you idiot? Like, right. there's there's like actual motivation behind it right. because of the fact that she is an artist and she's looking at the world in a completely, completely different, different way. way. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you do? Did you study any? Um, you're saying that Camille it comes from a performance art world, so yes. she was able to kind of guide you. through She the was process. able to guide me through. I watched some of her pieces that she worked on, and then um, there's another. Um, I don't know if she's a performance artist, but she's definitely installation artist um, that Camille drew a lot of information from. And so I looked at that artist's work, um, and I kept saying to Camille. 
I'm not this person that's doing this. I don't want to be this. And she was like, no, it's just, <laughs> you're not that person. Because I was like, because I think this is bullshit, actually. <laughs> and I don't want to be that person. <laughs> she was like, you're not that person. Um, but it was it was very interesting exercise. Like, you know, I mean, I think anytime you're an artist of en in any version of that, you have to ask yourself, like, how much importance do you give to your art and how much importance do you give to being like a responsible member of society mm -hmm. and I think the people who are the healthiest find a balance if if the artist slips too far into art world I actually find those people slightly unlikable because yeah. they're not they're no Old. longer giving back to the world in a in a productive way you know right. um, so that was the line I was like I'll do this film as long as she's destructive towards herself, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be glorifying being destructive as an artist towards the whole world. Yes. Um, so it was a constant dialogue. Oh, that's um, cool that you got to like kind of discuss yeah, it. To discuss yeah. it, because Camille and I have different point of views actually about where right. those lines are. Um, so it was an interesting process. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's nice to see something that's not like a, a send up, because so many times the art world is seen as this cold, yeah. place where people are out of touch, where right. they're like elitists. Right. Um, but for, there was just like so much more going on um, behind the motivations. Yeah. I love the scene where, you know, one of her subjects destroys her art exhibit and mm -hmm. she goes, leave it. Yeah. This is where this is where it's supposed to be. Because this it's about better. the man. And here's the man. Now we can actually yeah. see him. Yeah. yeah. It was brilliant. Um, so uh, you worked with Sam Shepard on this did. amazing Sam Shepard. This is his last this, movie. This was yeah. Uh, what was that film. experience like? Uh, how what were your impressions on you know when you when you first met him and you first started working with him on the script? He's just like a really easy guy, you know. Like he was a guy who was wildly intelligent. He loved language. He signed on for this the film because he loved the script. He loved the, the use of language in the script and he thought Camille was doing something really interesting so he was like, I'll show up for that. Um, he's just, I think one of the things that marks his career is how present he was in his life and um, he drew on the people around him. He liked to look people square in the face. There was no kind of facade. There was no remove between his work and his self. He, it all came out of his just love of being alive. Mm -hmm. And so then you're spending time with that guy, you know? Mm -hmm. and. Um, there's a scene in the film where Sam was just happened to have wanted a peanut butter sandwich, and so then he had a peanut butter sandwich and we were ready to go, so then he was eating a peanut butter sandwich. And so then the poor guy he had to eat ended up eating like 15 peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> we kept going, you know, it was late, whatever. Um, but he's just, you know, he's just great. He's great. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's also another scene where he has like an emotional breakdown. Mm -hmm. What was that day of shooting like? That um, was like at three in the morning, mm -hmm. and we were shooting in Camille's parents' home. Um, so it was familiar surrounding, and it's actually where I was living at the time with my um, husband and my mother and my four-year-old and my three-month-old, oh. who were living in that house. So my family had to get out <laughs> for the <laughs> night while we shot, and um, so it was very familiar surroundings, which was nice um, because presumably I would have been in this house a lot with Sam's character and um, Sam and I were very easy together you know we had already shot all of the stuff in the apartment building we had shot um, the bulk of our work together it was one of the final scenes we did together um, and it didn't it felt kind of very like a, an organic extension of how much we actually genuinely liked each other and um, he of course was brave and vulnerable but um, that also felt like right at his fingertips you know mm -hmm. I don't know if he had been diagnosed yet he certainly hadn't shared um, his diagnosis with any of us but when we saw him a year later um, he was starting to have symptoms so I don't know. I don't know where he was, but he uh, was willing to be heartbroken. Mm. 
Um, what did you learn from working with him um, besides the fact that you can incorporate a peanut butter sandwich, sandwich. into your acting skills? Just that in, it's always worth it to seek out intelligence and to seek out knowledge and um, that everything you put in, uh, your mind and your heart, is going to come back out. Mm. Um, what is the through line between the characters that you play? Um, you've, you've had a couple of, like, very... Determination, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, they all have... They all have some, like inner drive and their demons are very different their obstacles are very different but all of them seem to have um, a, a, an untiring will mm -hmm. yeah I can see that um, so I wanted to ask you some very quick questions mm -hmm. it's called first best last worst okay first job where you thought I've made it Tom Stafford's play The Invention of Love on Broadway wonderful uh, best prop set piece or location from Never Here? And it's interesting to know that you were actually staying in one of the locations, but is there a piece? I mean, there's so much really cool art yeah. in, in, on the sets. Um, actually, a rock that Vincent Piazza gave me in an exercise where we were supposed to give each other a gift, because um, our characters were supposed to have known each other a long time, and he gave me a rock. <laughs> and I had that rock on set with me all the time. Nobody in, nobody knows, about, you know, nobody saw it, yeah. but for me it was very special. Very cool. Uh, the last time you got lost in someone else's identity. It's a bit I don't, esoteric. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't get lost. Yeah. Yeah. You're able to very, very much separate from the characters that you play. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's good. Worst audition experience. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, for some terrible play where I was uh, supposed to be a comedy and I was doing some big, like, yucca, yucca, yucca audition and then, and then nobody laughed. I got done and it was like, it was so silent. And then I actually said, silent. And then still nobody laughed, and then I just, like, died. I just wanted to, like, crawl and die. It was awful. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, yeah, just to wrap, wrap up on uh, Never Here, mm -hmm. I, like, for me it was, the film was, like, it was so interesting because mm -hmm. you really do want to try to put it into a, a box, and then eventually mm -hmm. you have to just kind of let go and say, oh, this is a piece that, is really more about the journey than it yeah. is about the destination. Mm -hmm. But the last scene was so fascinating to me, and you know, I, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but it right. just. I, what did you think about how how the film wrapped up? Like how that what, how did that final scene impact you? Um, I mean, I know I've definitely had the impulse in my life, like like today cannot get accomplished what if I could just disappear mm -hmm. and where her life went was so extreme that I didn't blame her you know for that that final choice right I don't know where she's going I don't know where she's <laughs> headed but I understand like just saying I, no more no mm -hmm. more of this yeah yeah um, the piece reminds me a lot of, uh, like, Mary Heron and uh, Cindy uh, Sherman's directorial work. work. Um, there's something indescribable about, tr like, Tribeca, New York, mm -hmm. the art scene. Yeah. You know, did you feel fully immersed in that kind of world when you were filming? Yeah, I mean, it was a 24-day shoot, and 20 of them were nights in New York in November. So we were just in, and we were all over. You know, we were in, we were in Queens, and we were in Brooklyn, and we were in downtown, and we were, we were like, all over. And Camille no grew up in New York, so she knows the city really well. And um, it, was, it was a surreal experience making it. We all just had to kind of, like, lean in and we were having some fun but we were also surviving it in a way too um on very little sleep right. and these funny spaces and um, you're in every single scene too aren't you yeah I think there's something <laughs> ridiculous like like three shots that I'm not in like not even <laughs> scenes it's you know it's like yeah it was it was big oh, 
amazing. Yeah. Um, do you have any like uh, favorite moments of this movie when you when you look at it? I mean, I know a lot of it involves you personally, but are there any favorite favorite moments? There's the whole sequence with Vincent um, in the bedroom where we're telling stories to each other. Mm. Uh, it's like this little like respite from the yeah. rest of the craziness. Yeah. And those that was all just improv. We were just talking. We were just telling stories, and they just rolled camera. Um, I love that sequence. Um, I don't. I I. I find it strange and wonderful, the sequence uh, where I'm making myself the food and I just keep feeling like there's somebody in the house with me. Yeah. I don't know. I know that feeling well. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. And I loved doing the performance art piece at the very beginning with the body parts. Yeah. Coming into frame. It was really fun. Yeah, and wow, what a... Uh, but the, it's that camera angle towards the end of it yeah. is so creepy. It's so creepy, <laughs> right? When the camera moves. Yeah, such a like. I mean, this movie is like, uh, if you're, if you get paranoid about like, yeah. you know, you don't want to look through a window because yeah. you're afraid you'll see a face staring back. Yeah. This is the That's movie to see. Yeah. <laughs> All of the performance art was really like, because Miranda, she's like the closest to herself when she's doing her work. There's like a focus and a stillness that comes over her. And so all, creating all of those pe pieces was super satisfying and interesting. Like the piece where I'm filming myself um, lip syncing to Sam's voice. Yeah. And like, and I was actually lip syncing, so I had to actually like listen to the rhythm and like do, it was fun. Yeah, 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 very cool. Well, yeah. I've, it's kind of inspired me to go out and see some more um, performance art pieces. Oh, cool. great. Uh, um, but, Murray, thank you so much yeah, for joining us. The movie is so never happy here. To be here. And, uh, yeah, we'll great. see you soon. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. <laughs>